I know. I know. I know how you. Excuse. Come on, come on, stop. I know just how you feel. I have a mirror. <laughs> this group is possessed tonight. I... Yeah, you're happy now, but you realize while you're here, your kids are sitting at home with your credit cards watching the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> Ordering things. Right. Son made that 80 carat zircon. What is cubic zirconia? <laughs> I don't see you wearing sports outfits very Occasionally, much. Occasionally, yes. You wear, you wear suits. Well, what? You look like a large, happy koala bear. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you were not even gonna talk about <laughs> Harold Teen lives. Uh, we may be interrupting the show a couple of times tonight. Hope you don't mind. Walter Cronkite asked me to pass the hat for CBS. <laughs> See? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Tough, yeah. Are they cutting back here at NBC at all? No, sir. They wouldn't dare. Oh, I see. I hope not. Well, let's see what's going back in Washington. That's where all the funny stuff is lately. Uh, the House voted down aid to the Contras. They wouldn't go for it. The countries are desperate. They said, if they don't get the money by April 1st, God will call them home. <laughs> we, should, we shouldn't worry about Oral Roberts. He just got a 30-day reprieve <laughs> from Michael Landon. So, <laughs> Oral is a little depressed because earlier, uh, to cheer him up, his wife gave him a three-week membership to the Book of the Month Club. <laughs> anyway, it seems that this, this money, which went from Iran to Switzerland to apparently to um, the countries, uh, $10 million is still missing, and they can't account for it. The countries admitted today that most of the money was spent on flowers and candy for Fawn Hall. <laughs> You know, Vaughn, she's the pretty lady who is Colonel Oliver North's secretary. Was turned down a half a million dollars from Penthouse Magazine to pose nude. For half a million dollars, I would hang nude with the... <laughs> with the salamis and Nate Nell's window. <laughs> Now, have you seen the latest with the president? Yesterday, the reporters are questioning him. Reagan was avoiding ex saying he had laryngitis. And he, he, he says, I lost my voice. <laughs> and when the reporters looked a little skeptical, the president says, I lost it. But do you remember where your voice was, August 8th, 1985? <laughs> oh. Late bulletin just came in from the newsroom. You probably haven't heard this. The Vatican just condemned a witch doctor for doing a fertility dance. <laughs> I realize that's a little dicey, but you try it. <laughs> the Vatican came out with a new pronouncement, very strict. You familiar with it? They don't want even Shirley MacLaine to come back unless it's a natural birth. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Here's something that will cheer you up. The doctors say that the health of the Ayatollah Khomeini has taken a turn for the worse. Oh. Yeah, he's 86 years old. The doctors say he's not expected to live much longer. And the doctors told the Ayatollah to have a couple of drinks, uh, maybe a little sex, so they can have one picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Uh, do you know what the, what's the postage rate right now? Postage stamps. What are they? You know they're going up to 26 cents? No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yes, yeah, what I like. <laughs> Why don't they just put some adhesive on the back of dollar bills and get it over with? <laughs> you know, forget the whole thing. Uh, How many of you are familiar with Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in uh, London, is it not? Mm -hmm. Have you been there? You know the latest figure to be installed in... Madame Tussauds Wax Museum? Sil no, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Some lady said, get out of here. I'm <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Stallone was very philosophical about being a six feet wax figure. He said, Well, you gotta be a candle, you gotta be a candle, you know. You do? <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Anyway, tonight, tonight we have very clever guy, good actor, funny man, Danny DeVito. <laughs> Very amusing writer who writes a lot of articles for the New Yorker magazine. Calvin Trillin is here tonight. And a young man, and when I say young man, I mean young. He is four years old. Uh, I believe he is from Texas. And his name is Rowan Verovedecker. And he is a genius at spelling. In fact, they would not let him, they would not let him in the spelling contest, I guess, because he was in kindergarten. But he beat five. It's, it's amazing. He is here with us tonight. And. What? Oh, yeah. The Mighty Cars and Art players are going to do right. a little something for you? Sure. My first guest uh, came to our attention because of, he has an exceptional talent. He can spell over 3,000 words, and he is only four years old. But we invited him here to uh, probably humiliate all of us. <laughs> he is from Houston, Texas, and his name is Rohan Vera Videcker. Rohan? <laughs> Are you comfortable in that chair? Yeah. Yeah, did I pronounce your name? Now, I was a little worried about your name. The first name is Rowan. Rohan. Rohan Vara Decker. Yeah. Did I do that right? Yeah. Yeah. You're a good-looking boy. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Have you been on television much before? Yes. Yeah, down in, down in Houston? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you come in here by, by plane trip from, from Houston? Yes. How, how was the trip? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> but it was, um, the plane trip was... Super, and my sister didn't even bother me. <laughs> yeah. Your sister didn't bother you at all? No. How old is your sister? One. She's one. <laughs> what, what's her name? Rita. Rita. That's a pretty name. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, we, uh, did we send a car for you, a limousine, to bring you out here tonight? Yes. Yeah, do you, have you ridden in a limousine before? I'm not telling. What? I'm not telling. It's another show. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> now, somebody told me, Rowan, that when you were going to be on our show, yes. uh, you, you, you read something about me. You didn't, you didn't know me very well, right? Because you probably don't stay up this late to watch the show, do you? Yes. Uh, I did. Oh, you did? Uh, on Monday, yes. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah, how, how did you like it? Did you like the show? Yeah. You know what? I'm a, uh... <laughs> um, you know, when I read the book about you, and when you were 13 years old, you used to do magic tricks. You did read I did magic when I was 13. That's yeah. right. Can you show me some? <laughs> Okay. I'll tell you what I do. Now, I haven't done a lot for this, but do you like coins? Yes. Okay, I'll show you how to make a coin disappear. All right? Okay. All right, and we got, you see this? That's a quarter, right? Yes. Now, if I take it and hold it, and I give it to you, would you hold it for me? Yes. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Now, watch very carefully. Okay, here it is. And you hold it. <laughs> All right. You like that? Want to see it again? Okay, now I'll take it over here. Now, you hold that one. Don't let it go. Yeah. <laughs> right over here, in your ear. Uh, you like that? Yeah. You got it, huh? Okay. 
Now, tell me about this spelling bee. You, uh, you, were, you tried to get, get into a spelling bee, and I understand they wouldn't let you be in yeah, it? Yeah, I went to five rounds, and I won all five rounds, but the sixth round... And they said I have to go, but when I went there, I couldn't go because I was too young. You were too young. Yeah, but you went through five different rounds. Yeah. Now, wh what age were, what, what, what grade were the other people in? Um. Somebody said they were like the fifth grade students or something like that? One through five. One through five. And you're just still in kindergarten or? Pre-kindergarten. Pre-kindergarten. <laughs> when did you realize you were a good speller? You like, you like words? Yes. Yeah. How, how, how old were you when you started this? Four. You were four. Four, that's right. Okay. You're going to be five tomorrow. You're kind of kidding us. You're closer to five, aren't yeah. you? You're gonna be, your birthday's tomorrow? Yeah. Can you try to come? Can I try what? Can you try to, try to come to my birthday? Can I come to your birthday? Yeah. Where's the party going to be? In Disneyland. In Disneyland. You know when my birthday is? Yes. When? October 23rd, 1925. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. How'd you know that? You, you, you read that, huh? Yeah. Somebody told me in addition to... We're going to get to the spelling in a minute, but somebody told me in addition to spelling words, you, uh, you can name the capitals of any state in the United States. Right? The capitals. Can you know all the capitals of all the United States? Mm -hmm. If I give you a state, could you give me the capital? Sure. I know uh, all Alabama to Wyoming. Alabama through Wyoming. Yeah. Okay, how about Nebraska? Uh, Lincoln. That's right. Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm just going to give you the ones I know. How about it? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. South, South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota. Bismarck? Bismarck. And North Dakota? No. No, no I think you may have them. Uh, South Dakota. And there's North Dakota and South Dakota. Uh, uh. Bismarck is one of them. But I think that's North Dakota. Oh, yeah. How about South Dakota? Pierre? Pierre, that's it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to trap you there. You just got the two Dakotas mixed up. Anybody could do that. Okay, one more. Ed, give them a, any state. Massachusetts. Uh, Boston. 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 There you are. Okay, now, shall we... I've got a list of words here, okay? We do commercial first? Okay, we're gonna do a, you know what a commercial is? Yeah. You know what a commercial is? Mm -hmm. Where we stop and have to sell something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> okay, we are back. Now, if you just join us. If you just tune in, my young friend here is Rohan Vera Vedecker from Houston. Um, also, besides the capitals of all the states, I understand you know all the planets. Yes. Uh, can you name the planets? Mm -hmm. I can name all nine of them. All nine of them? Okay. Go ahead. Mercury, Venus, huh? Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Pretty good. Very good. Thank cool. you. you want to try? You're welcome. You want to try some spelling words here now? Sure. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you these. Okay. Let's start off with uh, extraordinary. E X T R A O R D I N A R O Y. That's correct. Uh, hypocrisy. H Y P O C R I S Y. That's right. Get a toughie here. How about superfluous? S U P E R F L U O U S. F L U O U S. Right. <laughs> Amnesia. A M N E S I A. 
All right. Are you making that disappear? Are you working on that? You just have to work on that. I'll show you how that's done later. All right? Okay. You how do you make that really disappear? What? How do I make it you get married? <laughs> you don't understand that joke, but you will someday. What? There's no such thing as marrying yet. Yeah, marrying. You're gonna get married someday, you think? Yeah, when you are big? Yeah, when you're big and have a family of your own, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. You should do all those things. What would you like to be when you when you get older? You thought uh, about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanna be a president that's P R D S I D N T. <laughs> Well, that's, that's certainly right. Yes, President. <laughs> president. Well, that, that, you got to might as well set your sights high, right? And go for the top job, President of the United States. Yes. Boy, that would be something, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. How about, you want to try another word here? Yeah. Okay. Inextinguishable. E-N, uh, I mean, E-N, yeah? Inextinguishable. E-N. I-N. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I-N, E-X-T-I-N-G-U-I-S-H-A-B-L-E. You're right. How about uh, bioengineering? B I O E N G I N E E R I N G. Yeah. 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 You have, are there favorite words you like to spell? Yeah. That most people miss? What, what are some of those? Abbreviate. Abbreviate. Yeah. Um, A B B R E V I A T E? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Not bad for somebody who was born October 23rd, 1925. <laughs> Twitter, why do you like abbreviate? Oh, because it has two B's, BB. BB's, yeah. What, now, what other words are you famous? Uh, but, uh,. Bioengineering. Bi well, you did that one. You did bioengineering. That's my favorite word. That's your favorite word. Yeah. Inextinguishable. Inextinguishable. Yeah, how many words altogether can you spell? Somebody said like 3,000 yes. different words. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, you, are you going to go in the first grade next year? Mm-hmm. Will, will you be in the spelling bee next year? Since you'll be now five, will they let you be in the spelling bee next year? Um, yeah, next year. Yeah. Do you think you can win? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you're going to Disneyland. For, what do you want for your birthday tomorrow? You thought about it? Anything's fine. Anything's fine? <laughs> nothing, nothing special you would want at all? No. Yeah. Well, you're a very nice young man. It was, it was nice having you on the show. Did you have a good time tonight? Yes. We enjoyed having you here. Thank you. You, you keep up the good work, and we'll, we'll keep in touch with you, all right? Okay. Okay, Rowan, you can take the quarter. You want the quarter? Yes. Okay. Thanks for coming. Inextinguishable. <laughs> Just like he spelled it. <laughs> he was right. Four years old. Yeah. Oh. I was four. I had a tutor for potty training. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Danny DeVito is here and Calvin Trillin, so stay where you are. And other stuff. The biggest movement in television today is toward information programming. Local stations are increasing the length of their broadcasts. One cable network provides 24 hours of news a day. Obviously, TV news is here to stay. Let's take a look at what a typical newscast might look like in the future, 20 years from today. March 12, 2007. It's the evening news with Zontar Rather. Good evening. From the polluted oceans to the radioactive mountains to all the United States, here is the news. There was a close call today in the Vatican. The newly elected head of the Catholic Church, Michael J. Fox, was almost suffocated when he tried on for the first time his Pope hat.
After years of lobbying by animal rights activists, the Supreme Court has ruled that laboratories may no longer use animals in experiments, but instead must use testing subjects that are universally agreed to be expendable, namely game show hosts. <laughs> In our Hollywood file, ABC announced that a series popular back in TV's golden age, Moonlighting, will go back into production, only with a new look. The male lead, Bruce Willis, whose hair was thinning back in the show's heyday, has gotten a hair transplant. The irony... <laughs> the irony is that Willis's co-star, Sybil Shepard, has come over the years to closely resemble actor-activist Ed Asner. <laughs> a... A sad story about one of our former colleagues, ex-White House correspondent Sam Donaldson, who, you may recall, became tragically insane in 1989 and escaped from the institution this morning. He was fished out of New York Harbor by the Coast Guard while screaming abrasive questions at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> On the business front, as you know, the health consciousness of the 80s led to the opening of a special clan of food establishment, Ruffage Restaurants, which gave new meaning to the term fast food. <laughs> Today... And today, the most successful chain of these roughage restaurants, Bob's Fiber Boy, <laughs> went bankrupt today because of the high cost of providing 50 men's room attendants per restaurant. <laughs> the, the FBI has arrested top executives of the DuPont Corporation after undercover agents discovered that the fabrics Orlon and Dacron are not synthetic after all, but are made from the fur of Smurfs who are slaughtered for their pelts. Disgusting. And speaking of lovable creatures, it's 20 years ago this week since the decision to allow condom ads on television. This decision paved the way for what has become the most successful Saturday morning cartoon show in television history. I'm referring, of course, to Captain Condom. In our, in our whatever happened to department, this item. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, who dropped out of sight in 1987 and started up a very successful breakfast cereal product, Nabisco Shredded Documents, <laughs> was finally married to the one who has been his constant companion since those trying days back in 1987, his station wagon. <laughs> in Washington yesterday, they were, there was a reunion of living American presidents. In attendance were Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, and Richard Nixon. 96-year-old Ronald Reagan was absent. Mr. Reagan claims he forgot the date of the reunion and also forgot he is a former president. <laughs> meanwhile... Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, a joint investigative committee in Congress has been forced to investigate a White House scandal dubbed Alphabet Gate in which it is alleged that President Vanna White has been secretly selling vowels to Iran. That's the news. This is Zantar Rather. Good night and good luck. Here's a very talented, funny guy. He does an no introduction. Uh, he did years on Taxi. Uh, he's starring in a new movie called Tin Men, which just recently opened, I guess, all over the country. Would you welcome Danny DeVito? Massachusetts. Forget it. <laughs> you believe that? I can't believe this. This guy is. So I was trying to remember terrific. when I, I was trying to remember when I was four, but you can't remember when you're four, or no. can you? Well, I got a four-year-old. Do you? Lucy's four. Yesterday, yeah. Can she uh, name? I, the... I, I, you know, no. Can no, she name she... the fourth the nine planets? The nine planets? I can't name the nine planets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. Uh... Were you bright in school? Or did no, you? No, know? no, 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 no. None of that. None of that. Yeah. No. 
No, I mean, you know, I, I, was, I was an average student. I didn't like it. I didn't like to go to school. I, I, I... Horsing around most of oh, the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, clowning around. In Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> you! No, I mean, well, I went to school at nuns. In the, you know, the first, uh, the first uh, eight, eight years, I was, was nuns. I mean, yeah. you know, you, strict. it's like a lot of hair pulling and knuckle cracking. Yeah. And, you know, it was strict, really. I mean, you used to go to get the new books. They give you the new books when you, when you come to school the first day. You always open up and there'd be hair in the books. <laughs> you know? Yeah, really. Speaking of hair. Oh. Is this a different color? You noticed. Now, if you got a color television set, no, it's, it's, this, is, this looks like a hint or rinse job. It's, it's kind of amber. It's kind of like a... I'm doing a new film yeah. uh, called Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> and, uh, is that the title? Yeah, yeah that's the Throw title. Mama, from, Throw the Mama from the Train. And it stars myself and Billy Crystal, and uh, it's uh, we start shooting on the 13th yeah. of April. And I, I was just testing things, you know, with this. I'm also directing the picture. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, you know, I was trying some, uh, you know, some little things with the character, you know. We're we're doing all so kinds of. Yeah. You when, know, did you, when did you start? When did your hair start? As they say, thinning. When did it start thinning? Thinning. Yeah. When I think I was about eight. <laughs> 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 it's it's kind of gone there, you know. I mean, like, well, I, usually sometimes you have to do the spot, you know. Yeah. You have to. Uh, I remember when I, I did Going South with uh, Jack Nicholson. Right. He directed that picture, and it was uh, we didn't do any makeup at all. You know, we just were out in Mexico, and uh, we all had little tans. But I remember what we used to do is go by the makeup truck and stick our heads in the truck, and she'd spray us with streaks and tips. You know. Yeah. Just to fill it yeah, out. Yeah, we'll fill it out a little bit. You know. Now we've talked about this the last time you were here, although I didn't know it. You were a beautician at one time, right? Yeah. Under the name <laughs> Mr. Danny. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's true, that's true. That's right. I don't know why that cracks me up. Well, it's just, it's a funny image, I think. You know, you see me running around with the scissor and the comb, you know, doing hair. My sister's, my, as a matter of fact, my sister who I, I worked uh, for, she's out here now. Yeah. And my mom is out here. Yeah. She's, uh, they came out to visit. They live in Jersey and they, yeah. they come out to visit. Got a lot of Jersey people there. Yeah. It's great. Staying for a while? Mom? Yeah. Yeah, she came for, a, she stays for a month and then stays for Two or three. Yeah? Yeah. She's a, you know, Did but, you get along well with her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get along well with her. A lot of people, you know, I mean, nothing against mothers or fathers, but can't take two or three months. Oh, with, but, but uh, Julia is great. You, you remember Julia was on the... She did Taxi. You remember the... You did have your mother on Taxi, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, you remember the, the... She played my mom on, the, on two shows, and it was terrific. That's yeah, interesting. It was great. Yeah. 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 Has she ever had any acting she, experience No, she, she had never done anything before, you know, but it's... Uh, you know, she was in her late 70s. We were trying to cast... You know, Louis's mother, and uh, was going on and on and on, trying to. You know, people were coming in, and 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 Ed Weinberger, who was the creator of the show, he wasn't happy, and he said to me, "Dan, why don't we, uh, you know, we give Julia a call?" And I said, I, "I'm not gonna. You know, my mother's 78 years old. I'm not gonna call her and say come out and do the show. It's a live audience and all this." So he said, "Well, let's try it out. We put her on the speakerphone. He calls her in Jersey, and he says, uh, Mrs. DeVito, this is Ed Weinberger. We want to, uh, you know, we're looking for somebody to do the show. It's not a lot of lines." We'd like you to play uh, Louie's mother on the show. She cut him, cut him off. She said, hey, I can do dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he, uh, he, he... <laughs> Everybody's in the show business. Right? Yeah, so he, he, uh, he flew her out, and they picked her up in a limousine. She was very thrilled. And, and when it came time to, like, uh, the only thing she wanted was she had, well, she smoked like a fiend, like a chimney. I mean, uh, she, was, she had to have her cigarettes, yeah. and she had to have a TV in the dressing room for her well, soap operas. She wouldn't want to... Well, sure. She didn't want to miss them. Yeah, I don't she, blame her. And she was pretty good at it, too, wasn't she? Well, she was very good in the show. The, the first show, I put her in the home. Yeah. You know, I don't even remember it, but I put her in the home, and then in the end, I go get her. Louis softens up, goes against his mother. In the second show, a year later, she did that. They, they brought her back, you know? And yeah. So, uh, she played a woman who... She played the... She married a Japanese man. I don't know if you ever saw the show. It's a pretty smart stroke of casting, though. Yeah, I you think know, so. Your mama. You grew up in Jersey. Yeah. Do you still keep your friends? Do you still... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Remember some of the guys you grew up oh, with? Oh, yeah, kid? absolutely. Well, I don't see them much you yeah. know, because I'm out here. But, but whenever we have, like, a, a premiere of a movie or something in New York or... With Tin Men, we just had, uh, we had a showing at the, the Museum of Modern yeah. Art. And I brought all the guys up, you know, Louis Scalpati and Sal Berdesco and... <laughs> yeah, and Major Yaccarino. <laughs> you know, Major... Those are great names. And uh, Nicky Adio and, uh, you know... And then you always had the nicknames, too. The nicknames, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. <laughs> hey, you. Um, what do you play in the, in the Tin Man? It's, um... Well, in Tin, Tin Man is a, it's a wonderful movie. It's, uh, 
It takes place in 1963 in Baltimore. It's directed and, and written by the same man who did Diner. And uh, his name is Barry Levinson, and he's, he's just a brilliant writer. Richard Dreyfuss, myself, Barbara Hershey. And I play a, a tin man. A tin, a tin man is a, a term used for aluminum siding salesmen. <laughs> Guys who sell tin, you know. Right. And, and it's, um, you know, it's really a wonderful film. It's not, it's a little different from anything right. I've done before. It's, uh, yeah. it's kind of like... Um, you know, it has, it's comedy, it's a very funny film, but it also has uh, great personal touches and, and some warm moments and, uh, you know, and it's a slice of life. Barry's just sensational at we've, that. We've got a small um, we have a clip of film clip. here. I don't know what the, uh, the scene is. Well, it's, uh, what, what it is, is if you, if you saw a diner, you know, one side of the diner, according to Barry, was all, all, these, young, all these young guys. And the other side of the diner were the tin men, these salesmen who would come in and they would hang out. The normal life, the day, daily routine of a tin man was he would get up around 10, you know, hang out a little bit, go to the diner at, you know, 11 or 12, you know, shoot the breeze, go to the track. And then when the, the sun went down, he'd, he'd sell tin. So this is like our meeting at the diner, and it's uh, Monday morning, and it takes place in the 60s. And Watch the monitor from the Tin Man. You watch Ed Sullivan, right? Which, which act do you like better, the guy who spins the plates, or do you like uh, the guy with the, the hand puppets? Senor Wences. Right, hand Senor Wences. I love this guy. Uh, Senor Wences. He's good. He's the best. I mean, that's good comedy. He's better like, than the guy who spins yeah, the plates. Of course he's better than he's he better. Got no, this guy, plus he's got no overhead. The man's got a hand, a chalk, and a box. A and that's it. Every once in a while, he puts a little wig on it. Hello, sir. I love the guy. I'm going to tell you something. Okay. This Bonanza is not an accurate depiction of the West. That's all I'm saying. Do you have watched that show? Bonanza. Is somebody talking about Bonanza in here? Uh, uh, today's a Bonanza oh, it's day. Oh, it's Monday. Monday. Today's Bonanza must be. It's a Bonanza day. I think it's E day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, laugh. You laugh about it. The boys yeah. You can laugh about it, but it's just not believable. We haven't seen the show. It's a 50-year-old father with three 47-year-old sons. You know why they get along good? Because they're all the same age. Hey, car, you ride the horse, and I'll go to town. Come on. What kind of show is that? Well, I don't... Look, I'm not an authority on it like yeah. you are, but yeah. I mean, I occasionally watch Bonanza, and yeah. I think it's like, can you believe here's a man who's got three kids from three different wives? They all died at childbirth. Hey, what is this here? a hell of a man. <laughs> who's going to go around there? Get He's on. the kiss of death. Yeah. That was wonderful dialogue, huh? Right. I'll tell you something. It's not often that somebody comes on the show with a film clip where you want to see a little more. Yeah. Usually well, you see you. something, you're saying, gee, that's, uh, that's not thank bad, you, but this, is, this great dialogue. Thank you. Yeah, it's, well, Barry is just... Uh, he was born in Baltimore, and, uh, and he has that whole feeling of, you know, the ambiance, all the yeah. feelings, you know, the character, idiosyncrasies and things. Oh, was a 50-year-old man with three 47-year-old <laughs> yeah. sons. Yeah. Jackie Gale. Wences with no over Jackie Gale, is, he's hysterical in this film. That's he's funny. A, he's, it's a wonderful character. I wish you well with it. Thank you. Looks like a good picture. We'll he's take a break. We'll be right back. Calvin, uh, Calvin Trillin drops in occasionally on the show. He's a well-known humorist. He's written several books. He writes for The New Yorker and has a nationally syndicated newspaper column. Would you welcome, please, Calvin Trillin. <laughs> Danny said he couldn't spell. You are a journalist. You are a writer. Is it necessary to be a good speller? To be a good journalist? I, I hope not. Um, <laughs> I, I was raised in a home where it was considered very important. When, when I was a kid in Kansas City, my father had a standing offer of this staggering array of prizes for anybody who could spell one word. The word was yifnif. Yifnif? Yeah, it sounds like a very simple word. Uh, we couldn't spell it. Um, we finally got a ringer in, my cousin Keith from Salina, who had got to the finals of the Kansas State Spelling Bee. And um, he, did, he did what I think is the best effort. He did, we knew it was complicated. He did. Uh, y Y G H K N I P H. Uh, yif Nif. Yif Nif. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry the Rotan had to duck out for his late show or something, because I like to ask him about that. Uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, um, I'd also like to ask him about pneumonial ultramicroscopic silico volcano coniosis. What the hell is that? Is that a word? Um, 
Yeah, that when I was a kid, that was the longest word in the dictionary. At least we thought it was. And I, I think for some high school club or something, I had to learn how to spell that. And I spelled it quite well for. Uh, what? Long. Can you do that again? Uh, no. Actually, <laughs> I, I, I thought I, it was anti disestablishment no, uh, materialism no, no, or something. No, like actually, that. I, I, I say no proudly because I've been trying to forget how to spell it uh, for years. Because I think that there's a lot of stuff like that that just clutters up our minds. You know that if we could get rid of that, like when I quit. I don't believe that stuff about only using a little bit of our brain. I think we're all going flat out. Right. You know what I mean, I think that's all there is. And, and uh, this is it. Right, this is it, right. And so I figure if you know a word like pneumonia, ultramarcoscopic, silical volcano, coniosis, I've been trying, uh, as you see, I can still say yeah, it. I've yeah. been trying to forget that. Yeah. Um, I think if I forgot that, I would know my social security number. Yeah, I would have a, clear that out of there. Yeah, because when I forgot how to spell it, uh, I was able to remember my army serial number. Stuff like that. Um, it was several years after I got out of the army, but I w it was, um, and it doesn't come up very often. No, most you can't work it in the conversation. Can you still uh, remember your serial? Tonight number? was the first time you know, one off microscopic silico volcanic bonuses, and I had to use. The I'm trying to think of my service. I can remember it. Is that right? Seven five seven zero one fifty four. I think that's because they drill that into yeah. you so well, much. Can you spell the mono No, no, no way. No I've way. been trying. When to... When you write, you you proofreading. If you don't know how to spell a word, you just take a stab at it and let somebody else go to the. Uh... No, I yell into my wife. Do you say? Yeah, she can't spell the same words I can't spell. <laughs> yeah, I I married her under the impression that she could spell a curd. I was misled. Um, <laughs> That's a whole new yeah, approach to yeah. marriage. You well, it's married compatibility. That's right. She gets really spelled yeah. words that you know how. I've been trying. I've been trying to forget the Greek alphabet for that same club. I, le I had to learn the Greek alphabet forward and backward, and I and I managed to forget it backwards. Alphabet. But I can't forget it forward. I think if I could forget it forward, can you do uh, the whole Greek alphabet? Oh yeah, alphabet gamma delta epsilon zeta eta theta iota kappa lambda mu nu xi omega kappa pi uh, rho sigma tau epsilon phi chi psi omega. Very good. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to applaud when I forget it. Ah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to then do. Then leave room for other things. You get that stuff out of there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because because uh, it's of little value, All right. I think. <laughs> memory. Are you good at memory? What were you yeah. doing as the joke is going around Washington on August 8th, 1985? It is possible to forget. Oh, August 8th. Uh, I was at home, uh, and... Uh, oh, I, I, I was at home thinking that the president might be getting a little slow. <laughs> uh, yeah. I see, I think he's having the same problem, this kind of overload Too much. problem. He knows some things he doesn't really need, all those Hollywood anecdotes or anything. He doesn't need those. <laughs> see, if he could get rid of the Hollywood anecdotes and get rid of the plot of some of those old Dana Andrews movies and yeah. stuff like that, because uh, they don't come up very often no. for the president. No, I mean, true. they don't you need them. And then he could maybe... In place of, say, the Dane Andrews movies, he could get the names of the cabinet. That's not a bad theory. You just think it's no. just overloaded, huh? Get rid of the other thing. You could tell which ones are Iran, which ones are Iraq, yeah. which is hard. That's right. Do you think there's too much information nowadays? People are exposed to too much stuff? It's like magazines. There are nine million ma You can't read all the stuff that's out nowadays. Well, that's true. And then they, they ask you to read more. You know, I've got a new thing now for those little cards in the magazines. You just go through and they fly out. Well, yeah, but no, I, I, I take a very positive approach because it says right on them that the magazine will, pl will pay the postage. It doesn't say they'll pay the postage if you want to subscribe. It says they'll pay the postage, and the people who sort those things have terribly boring jobs. So I try to cheer them up. I send the thing in. It's called Circulation Fulfillment, that department. I just put... I don't subscribe. I just say... Keep up the good work, circulation. <laughs> That's right. I, there's no use getting mad about those things. So if I hear something, you know, that I think I'd like to share with them, I, I was walking in New York the other day. Really, it's really true. I was walking in the village where I live, and a panhandler came up and said, um, do you have a little change? I'd like to buy some junk bonds. So, <laughs> so... I went home and got Newsweek and Time and tore out the cards and said, hey, guys, here's one you might like to hear. <laughs> Send them to the circulation fulfillment people. So that's the way you handle those little... I do little... the same thing with the people who call you at dinner time 
and tell you you've been pre-selected for a trip to Hawaii. Uh, I don't hang up. I say, great, Hawaii. Well, I remember my Uncle Harry when he went to Hawaii. And, you know, my Uncle Harry's the one who's got the theory that the first place Columbus landed in the New World was in Kansas City, right there, what's now the corner of 11th and Walnut. And then, uh, you know, he was coming through the Gulf of Mexico, and he, he went out the Mississippi, took a sharp left right there at the Missouri, and just went right straight there to Kansas City. Brown that time, he's saying, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, um, I learned it years ago from people when they first started putting um, uh, music in elevators. Oh. I was working in a place where some people didn't like it. Captive and, audience. And uh, what they did was they wouldn't leave the elevator till the song was over. <laughs> uh, they'd say, this is a real nice song. And, um, so they just stood there, you know, the door won't close. You just stood there, and so pretty soon they didn't have them in the elevator. <laughs> now, so I think maybe if everybody sends little messages, I don't know if they'll still have them, but at least the people in circulation fulfillment will have them. I think it's a good idea, and it makes other people yeah, happy. That's right. If any of you all know any jokes or anything like that, you just send them over there. Good idea. That's right. They'll pay the postage. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. We just have a minute to go. Any other life irritations that drive you nuts? Um, no, well, these new hotels now that tell you that they're going to get your shoes shined if you leave them outside the door. I'm, I'm terrified of that because I happen to know that the Prime Minister of Finland came to Washington once and left his shoes out the door at, at the White House, and he woke up the next morning, and they'd been donated to the Salvation Army. <laughs> um, so it's, I'm scared of all so that So you don't stuff. leave the shoes no, out there? No. Anyway, thanks for coming on that. That's Thank funny you. stuff. And next time I get a subscription thing, I'm going to do. I'm going to take your advice well, and send it back. And they will write pay. Write something nice. And they will pay the. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Danny, the movie opens when? Is it? Uh... The movie opened on Friday, but it opens wide tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for tomorrow, being here. Yeah. Hope you hope it's a big hit. Thank you. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, three ladies are going to work together: Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, and Emmy Lou Harris, and also Mr. George Hamilton will be here. So thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm humbled by that applause.